This is our third installment for Solar for Beginners. And we're going to be putting the whole thing together now. If you'll remember in the last episodes, we have a solar array, we have a controller, we have an inverter, and we have a battery. And now we're going to just tie them together. Something that should be noted, this system is entirely independent than from the house. Meaning, if the utility company were to shut off power from the line, if we were going into our wiring of a house, you could get a back feed and possibly kill somebody. So, if you're going to be doing that, you'd have to do an entirely different system and you're going to need a, to hire a master electrician. But our system is totally independent. If This would be ideal for like a retreat, a cabin in the woods, or uh, your own house like we're doing here. But to start with, this is an exterior wall. Okay, And I have to knock a hole through it, a one-inch conduit, so that I can bring in five wires. I've got two number fours, which are for the battery. I've got two number tens, which go to the array. And I have a grounding wire to ground the entire system. So the first thing we're going to do is pop a hole in this exterior wall. I've established where I want the wire to somewhat come through the wall. This is different than house wiring. I can't afford to have a voltage drop, so my wires to the battery have to be pretty short. So I don't have a lot of play like you would if you were running an outlet in a room. So right outside this wall is going to be the battery pack. The array is a little bit different. You can get away with a greater distance, but the battery is going to be pretty close to wherever you're establishing this setup. So. I've established where I want the wires somewhat to pop out, and I'll show you how I'm going to put a hole in the wall and bring the wires through. This box is called a rework box, and there's two little screws over in the corners, and what happens is you stick this into the hole that you just established, and as you turn the screws, little wings come out, and as you screw it down, they work their way up and pinch the sheetrock, the back side of the sheetrock, to this little flange right here, and it'll do something like that. Now, you do that when you're establishing a new box in uh, construction, but I also like to strengthen it by putting sheetrock screws into the side of the box up against a stud. I just stuck a pencil through my hole and marked the wall to get somewhat of an idea. But obviously you can measure up and say it's about 52 inches in my, in my case. And how far across I'm going to come. And I just took a shortcut and marked my wall. So our first step is to find a stud location. Now you can use a metal stud finder and it'll locate where the uh, heads of the screws are. Or you can kind of roughly estimate like this is a corner so I know that there's a stud right here, and I know 16 inches off of that, or roughly, there's going to be a stud somewhere right here, and then 16 inches right around here. So right here is going to be a stud, and this is my height. So I'm going to do an exploratory hole, okay, to make sure that there's no plumbing and no wiring right here. I believe there's a stud right here, and this is the height, so I'm going to take a sheet rock saw. It's got a, a tip in it and you can just kind of work it into sheetrock. Go slow because we don't want to hit a wire or plumbing. And we're just going to work our way and see if we got a stud where I think there's one. And there is. I can feel the stud on the tip of the knife right here, the saw. So, now I'm going to establish my box. So, just for us, you don't want to make this too large. You want to make it, you know, because these flanges, if you can see, aren't very large. So, we just want a box size that'll fit. So, I'm going to center it and we're going to put it right about here. 
and I'm going to do this trial by ear. I'm going to go very slow. I'm in no hurry. I'm in no hurry on this part. Yeah, right there's my stud. what's in there. I want to see plumbing or wiring or what I have. Now obviously I got an insulation. I'll take my finger and I'm, I'm looking around. I think I'm good. Okay, my box on the inside is three and three quarter. So real slowly, I'm gonna make this box hole the size I need. It's four and a quarter in width. I'm going to come over four and a quarter. Using a speed square, I'm going to roughly square this thing up. Too small a hole and too large a hole at this stage. And then we'll just enlarge it. But that's pretty rough what I'm looking at. inches or even 24 inches apart. This is an old house and they may have had a window here or a door here. You know, who knows what they did. But believe it or not, when I made my little hole, there's a stud here and a stud here. <laughs> Approximately three and a half inches apart. I need to come to this line. So I need to work this stud. I need to groove it out a little bit. So I'm going to use a jigsaw and I'm going to use a set of chisels that are very sharp and I'm just going to dig it out so my box will fit in between here. Be prepared for anything. I use my jigsaw to cut little grooves to score it sharp chisel and I'm just taking away a little bit of this stud so I'll get that box to fit in there. That's how it's done. Alright, I've cut the size of the hole. I had to score out and use a chisel to eat away some of that study because of the two so close to one another and that's what it looks like. Then we're going to take the screwdriver, turn this in and the, the wing nuts are going to come up and I'm going to attach sheetrock screws to secure this really well. Alright, the way this is going to work from the other side, the outside of the house, the wire is going to come up through here 
bend and enter the back of the box. Okay, just like that. It's a one inch L. And so what I need to do is drill a, a circular hole through the wood clapboards on the outside of the house. And I need to drill a one inch hole in the back of this box. The way I'm going to do that, the way I'm going to do that is using a hole saw. It just fits over the threaded section just like that. Okay? I'm going to drill a hole through the back of the box and through the, the clapboards on the house. And to get this thing lined up, I'm going to drill a pilot hole all the way through the house. And that's going to be centered. And then I'm going to take the box out, use this, drill the circular one inch hole, and then uh, drill the one inch hole through the clapboards with the pilot hole that I just drilled with this. So I'll show you how I'm going to do it. First step is my pilot hole, just a simple drill bit, right in the center of my box. Okay, that's the pilot hole. Alright, I have the hole saw installed in the drill and I'm going to use my pilot hole and drill out my one inch hole. Okay, now I'm modifying the back of this box. coming in and it's going to be secured with this locking nut washer like so. Quick look at our cooler that we've modified for our battery storage. We wanted to vent it, so we drilled three one-inch holes behind this vent and picked this up at Home Depot. And then uh, it's watertight, so I needed just in case water got into it. I drilled some drain holes. All right, and then on the back of the house. We're going to have the wires coming down, and I just put a sweeping 90 into it, and then the wires that the array has are going to come from an underground burial cable up into here, and then through here into the house. This is 12 2, in our particular instance it's 50 feet, and it's called Type UF-B. What that stands for is underground feeder cable. And the difference between that and normal Romex is the wires are encased in plastic. There is no paper product in this so that you won't get a wicking action. We're running 30 volts, 8.3 amps. 12 to 12 gauge wire is rated up to 20 amps, so we're really clearing that by quite a large margin. We're going to ground the system with an 8 foot grounding rod. Just pound it into the ground and then we'll put a coupling on it and attach the ground wire to it. 